Okay, how about the children come on and join me? That was beautiful. Made me think about when I was younger and I was in like those big Catholic cathedrals. It was really lovely. Okay, have a seat my friends. All right, I have this mic on here. Kevin, it's a little, a little intense. <laughs> All right, um, I've been sharing with you guys this book that I love because it's hard to teach children what God is when God is so much to us. And it's images of God for young children. And it has these beautiful pictures and these symbolic meanings of God. And we've already kind of learned about, we've kind of learned some already in church. God is breath. God is light. And I just love the images. God is night. God is word. God is silence. And then God is secret. And this one is a good one. God is our tears. If he weren't, how would, we, how would he understand our tears? How would he cry when we cry? But God has promised that one day he will wipe away all the tears from every eye and sadness will no longer exist. See? I think it's good that we have a God that knows um, how we feel. Huh? Um, yeah? How God cries um, is raining. Raining? <laughs> It's, yeah. Oh, well, that, that means God's crying today. Maybe he feels bad for Pastor Mark. And God is joy. All that God created comes from this joy. The thousands of beautiful sights on the earth, the millions of living creatures, the great world of stars in the heavens, these are an echo of his laughter. And when our hearts celebrate, we share in God's laughter and joy. Look at that. Like a birthday party. Sometimes I think of God on birthday parties just because we just reflect on how thankful we're each here, yeah? And what a blessing you all are and how grateful I am. Tomorrow, Brayden turns one. I'm not sure what you do for a baby birthday party. We're having one. Uh, yeah, we'll be grateful. Okay. His friends? His friends? Baby friends? He does have baby friends, but they tend to bite him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. God is a spring. No one can live without water. As our bodies are thirsty for water, our souls are thirsty for love and for beauty and for goodness, for justice and for truth. God is all of these and more. He is the source of all of these things, and He invites us to drink from the spring. See the little birdie drinking? Like love? I was talking to one of the youth on the mission trip, and I'm gonna to talk to the, the adults a little bit later today about the mission trip. And she was talking about somebody she knows who got adopted, and that person you know, has, has quite a bit of money, and, and, and he has a good life, and the mom loves him, but he's still not happy, you know? And it's kind of interesting that we always think of, like, money doesn't bring you happiness. Do you know why that is? Because your soul's, your souls need love, they need to connect. They need to feel something deeper. Something that we as Christians, we, we try our hardest to connect to God with our souls. But you could be the richest person in the world and still be very unhappy, right? And that's why we come to church and connect and we talk about our feelings. And then let's land on one more. God is a rock. Look at this big house. You've done that Bible lesson, we're supposed to build a rock. Rocks are hard, they are solid. They support anything that is built on them. A house, a strong castle. You can stay standing on a rock without even fearing that you will sink down. Do you think of God as your rock? No? Like when you get sad? Yeah? I think of God as my rock. When I get sad or lonely, church is the place to be. You come and you make friends, you laugh, you do crafts, you work together, you feed the homeless, and before you know it, you feel differently. You feel at peace. So I'm glad you're here. And today, Diamond, Diamond, you wanna stand up for him? Diamond's gonna take you downstairs to the nursery, and you're gonna make the tentacles on your octopuses for VBS. But it's pretty cool. All right, go ahead with Diamond.
The Old Testament reading this morning is found in Psalm chapter 34, verses 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him, and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried, and was heard by the Lord, and was, was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. Holy wisdom, holy word. Second reading is found in Ephesians, starting in chapter 4, uh, verse 22. You were taught to be put away from your former way of life, your old self, corrupt and deluded by its lusts, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to clothe yourselves with a new self, created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So then, putting away falsehood, let us speak the truth to our neighbors, for, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do make room, and do not make room for the devil. <laughs> Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander together with all malice and be kind to one, an one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Holy wisdom, holy word. Well, when a door closes, a window opens, and um, we're very lucky today to have um, some words from Catherine Lyle. Catherine is part, is, has double hats here in this church. She's our office manager and also in charge of children and family ministries. And then on top of that, she's been being our youth leader um, these last few months, and they just got back from a very unique special mission trip. And so when we needed um, words for this Sunday, she offered to share with you some of those experiences and we have some uh, pictures for you to see. And so um, we welcome Catherine. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I am glad you are all here. Uh, the summer can be kind of quiet time, but I don't feel like it's been quiet. Uh, I've seen the church so busy. We've been cleaning rooms and doing things. And the youth have been um, raising money to go on their mission trip. So um, the mission trip, it's funny, when you think of a mission trip, they're to serve God. Well, before they can afford to serve God, they need to serve <laughs> before they can serve again. <laughs> And our youth are just wonderful. They even did some work um, at Liz Wedberg's house, at Shelley's house. They are just phenomenal youth. We have a, a core group of youth. You know how in churches, as people have babies and children, they kind of go like this. We have about um, five to seven strong youth. And uh, we have coming up 30. So <laughs> you're going to see a spike <laughs> in the youth group. We have our core going now. 
and um, you're going to see it steadily rising over the next three years. <laughs> and this group of five are setting a strong, strong example of what it means to be in ministry with the Lord. And we have not been on a mission trip in a while. We've been without some youth for a while. And this year, the youth really wanted to go on a mission trip. And there was a local program, so we thought we'd get our toes wet. I just had a baby. He's turning one. And um, I did not have a lot of time to, to give to the youth. So I said, well, let's go on a local mission trip. And they were very excited about it. And Twinlow, our local camp, Methodist camp, they had this great program where you come Sunday night, you get in your bunk, and you work with several youth groups from around the world, the country, not world. Um, we worked with Minnesotans. There was about 40 Minnesotans. And then we worked with Fairwood UMC. Uh, we worked closelier with um, Fairwood UMC. We called ourselves Manitonians because Tyler calls us that. I don't know where that came from, but Manito UMC is called Manitonians. And so we called the Fairwoods because they wanted to name Fairwoodians. Um, so we were the Manitonians and the Fairwoodians, and you begin the morning with breakfast and prayer. The prayers are really interesting at camp, and if you've been to camp, it's like, there was one that was like, I'm going to praise the Lord, I'm going to praise the Lord, I'm going to eat, 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 I'm going to praise the Lord. I mean, they're a little different, um, and some of the little guys take it serious, and there's other little camps going on, so when we first get there to check in, um, you know, there was real cute, the, there was the primary campers, which is first to third graders, and the little primary campers, um, this one little boy, he gives his big brother a hug before his big brother heads off to the big camp, and he gets separated from the big guys, and it's just really sweet to see the campers, and so our group went with there, and in the morning, they work until about 2 p.m., and at 2 p.m., the camp store opens up, that was supposed to have candy and pop. They have like not really pop, which made our youth kind of sad, and candy, um, which they earned because they worked really hard, and we'll get into that. And then, um, then they get to go swimming, and they have like a boat they get to jump off of. Uh, they have all these like climbing things, these big island things where the kids jump on them and they go crazy. Um, they even went to cliff jumping, which was a little like not making some of the parents happy, but uh, the kids, they jumped off cliffs. No joke, they really did jump off cliffs. This is a tradition at uh, Twin Low. Uh, but the kids, they had a blast, and um, I tell them every year I don't do blood. It's not in, I don't do blood, so nobody got hurt, so they followed the rule. <laughs> so that was good, <laughs> there was no blood. <laughs> Uh, but the kids were on their best behavior, and then on Friday, all the groups get to go to Silverwood, which is their big, you know, thank you from the camp, and they have a blast at Silverwood, and um, Diamond made us very proud. She had never really rode a roller coaster, and she rode all the way up with me to, the, like, the final corkscrew, the one, you know, that goes, like, 60 miles per hour. It's pretty intense. Almost lost my lunch. Um... Diamond even went from no roller coaster, rode every roller coaster up to the big cheese, and she rode it. So the kids, they were awesome, and I'm going to share with you some pictures and some highlights and those times where we connected with God and we grew deeper. So uh, Bob and I are going to be kind of communicating as we talk through them, um, so bear in mind. So the first picture here is at Twin Lakes. As you all know, it has been hot and dry, and... Um, one of the problems Twin Lakes has have, they have a two-fold problem. They had, um, the, it was hot and dry, so in order for a lake to be healthy, the water needs to run through different canals and streams. It keeps the fish and the algae healthy. Well, and there's a rancher up top that we're partnering with, and so I'll get to him in a second. I don't think I have pictures from that, but I'll explain it. So down here is a canal, and you see where that one girl standing in the back there? I'm not sure which one it is, but this is us with the Fairwoodians. Um, the water used to be past her head, and now it's barely passable. In fact, a boat could barely get through it. We're not even sure why the boat decided to go through it. We almost had to push this boat through it. But we have to get sand from the bottom of that canal and bring it up shore so water can flow freer. And the youth, this work was, I think the youth worked harder than some people do in prison. I'm not joking. This work was intense work. And it was the first day. I felt like we broke our back that first day. So what they're doing is they got these buckets and two are in the water and the water is so coarse and sand that I have like no dead skin on my feet. Um, it is, it's really hard work. I'm, going, I'm a pretty 
down to earth blunt person. So the youth are scooping buckets of sand into the buckets and then they're we're on a bucket brigade, which I had never been in, and it will keep me out of prison. I will promise you that. It will keep me out of prison. Because then you have to pass these heavy buckets up the side of a hill to pull it out. So let's go to the next slide so you guys can, can you see where we're going up the side? And there the bucket brigade falls. The tricky part with the bucket brigade is um, youth don't like to work hard past an hour. That was some heavy work. So we would have our line, like one would randomly wander off from the line and you'd have to like bring them back. <laughs> like I'm walking like five steps here and the youth bring And I'm not really setting a great example. I used Brayden as an excuse. So there's me sitting with Brayden by the buckets. Um, but so we'll go to the next picture. You get a good idea. Oh yeah, there's Brayden. <laughs> The lady who heads um, the Twin Lakes Association, she kind of gives some grant money to help pay for the mission trip. She has a dog, and the dog loved Brayden and loved his dirty diapers. Um, real gross. And uh, anyway, the lady who was kind of coordinating us and coordinates the partnership with the rancher up there, uh, that's her dog, and that's Brayden and I. Oh, we can go to the next one. And there's, um, okay, so this explains another thing. So what happens in the lake when it gets really low, and uh, this is being good stewards of God's land, when it gets really low and really mucky, um, there was like this like marshy island that broke off and clogged the canal. So what, what um, Alex is doing there is he took a garden rake, and you take it in the water, and you slowly stream it across the water to pull out all the sediments and the muck that don't belong in, in the lake. And then you have to clean it out of the rake. And the girls were not a fan of the muck. I didn't mind the muck. I thought it was easier than carrying sand buckets. But uh, I think they did swap after lunch. But that's what Alex is doing there, is cleaning up the muck out of the bottom of the canal. OK, we're ready for our next. All right, there's some of the girls. And you can see like some of them are just one, like I think that's Adeline and Jackson, Pastor Mark's kiddos, and like Adeline's not even wearing shoes because the sand is so fine and particle, like I said, it's like a really awesome spa treatment that you wish would end. And so <laughs> you just wish that spa treatment would end. And so you can see she's barefoot and all their feet were really dry. And by the end of the mission trip on Thursday, I brought them nail polishes and lotion so they could redo their toes for Silverwood and uh, re-lotion because they were dry. All right, we'll go to the next picture. And that is how much sand the Manitonians and Fairwoodians got out of the creek. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. In under four hours. I kind of learned that day that, um, you know, like 100 years ago, like when they didn't have machines, they had teenagers. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's where the teenagers are. I mean, they are impressive. That's how, that's, that's how you would feed your family back then. You would just have lots of teens. Um, and that is how much, and it was really impressive because once we got the muck out, and that doesn't even show the pile of muck, but once I got the muck out and that sand out, you could actually see the stream th getting thicker. Like you could see the water flowing much better. And so um, it was really impressive. So there's our giant sand pile we dug out. All right, we're ready for the next job site. Oh, wait, we have to explain this little guy. So the lady really loves the creek, the director. She was a really fabulous lady, um, really loves the creek. Well, we found this guy. He's actually, he's not a lobster, although he was, could have been big enough to be a lobster. He's a, um, I forget what you call him. Crawdad. Crawdad, yeah. And one of, the, one of the kids found it, and he's like, oh, I found a lobster. And she's like, you better get that. I don't want it messing with the species. And she was like <laughs> freaking out with that. She thought there was a real lobster. And we're like, how did a lobster get in the lake? And she was like, well, some people dump their aquariums in the lake, and we have to get them out. We don't want them interfering with our species. And so then she was going to kill it. And the kids were like, don't kill it, don't kill it. And then, so this is a big distraction in our work day. And um, so then she takes a picture of it and sends it to some guy she knows, some biologist or something. And he says, no, actually, it's a healthy adult crawdad. So he got to live. Yeah. So <laughs> the crawdad survived the day. And then there's, then the, I chose Monday. I didn't really plan it in my head. Each day you kind of do a different site. I chose this one on Monday because Monday was supposed to be the hottest. And they got to go swimming in the water, you know, during the day. But it also kind of like broke all our backs before the week really began. So I did not think that went through. Maybe next year we'll think about doing the hardest day the last day. All right, we can go to the next. Oh, there's Alex with his lunch and the dog. 
He's not well trained. He will steal food, diapers, whatever you can get on. There we go. All right, we'll go to the next one. All right, so then um, day two, they got to go to um, a local ministry here called Family Promise in Spokane. We're all familiar with Family Promise. And Family Promise got this really lovely new building. They gave us a really great tour. Family Promise, for those of you who don't know, um, they work with local area churches and different churches and um, families during the daytime stay at this as a playground, a kitchen, and all the facilities, laundry. And at nighttime, they spend the night at different churches. And it kind of helps homeless, rather than stay at a homeless shelter, it helps homeless families kind of stay on their feet, keep wanting something better, keep them motivated, keep them resources. So that's kind of the design of Family Promise. And when we were there, the youth got to paint a fence in 90 degree weather. And the funny thing is, is they were excited. After spending four hours on a bucket brigade, this looked like awesome. <laughs> so they, they were excited to go to uh, Family Promise and help paint a fence. And um, we can go to the next slide. So there's Alex and, um, I mean, uh, that's Adeline and Jackson. We'll go to the next picture. There's a girl's painting. Um, that is, uh, that one's Diamond and Olivia. And they cracked me up because the girls were a lot of fun. Um, and at this point, they're getting a little tired, so they were looking for the most shadiest spot to paint. <laughs> so this is the spot they could find. So if you ever go to Family Promise and you walk to the gates, you'll see that there's a gate. I painted the gate, so I kind of followed suit. So I'm not really setting a good example. But those two girls were painting right next to the gate right there. Um, and we can go to the next picture. And then here's Alex. Alex helped to work on a patio with this gentleman. And I thought it was really kind of this emotional, spiritual thing. I know I don't have time to get into it, but basically Alex was working with a Christian who had just lost his daughter um, by the age of two. And Alex had talked about his experience losing his parents. And um, the two of them really bonded. And then as they started to talk, they realized they had different beliefs on church and religion and different rules, and they kind of came from different hot topic issues. But the two were focused on the patio and really connected, and I even saw them hug at the end. And I just thought it was this really powerful moment where we as Christians, we get so caught up on, oh, that's wrong, or the Bible doesn't say that, or this or that, that we lose sight of what it means to just serve God and be in service with each other. And those two connected and it was a really, really powerful moment to see Christians who don't agree, but come together and connect and not just say, I respect your issues, but I love you and I want peace for you. And that was a really powerful moment. So, all right, so then, Oh, okay, this is the next day, but I'll explain what also happened. That day also, the youth decided, because I told them I needed to come to the church and post pictures to the church Facebook, I don't know if they were like a little resentful or what, but the youth all decided to take a bite out of my lunch. So when I got back to have lunch, I ate the sandwich. I didn't realize that somebody took a bite out of my sandwich. I'm calling them out. Apparently, Jennifer McMurray decided this would be a funny prank. Maybe she was a little resentful, I don't know. But uh, then, then I get to the apple, and there's a clear bite out of the apple. And then like, I'm like, you guys, you know I can't. I don't like it when people touch my food. That's sort of my issue with potlucks and stuff. Um, and I'm like, I can't eat this. And they were so hungry. The youths were extremely hungry. They ate my food. So I don't know if it was their way to mark my food or what. But like, they each, and then the girl who ate my sandwich was upset that I already ate my sandwich. Anyway. Um, Next mission trip, we're bringing more food. There was, there was a breakdown in communication on how much food hungry teens can go through, especially when they're doing manual labor. And these pictures are when they got to serve at House of Charity. And they got to cut and serve a meal. This is the fourth and final day. We're working, there's Alex working with two of the Fair Woodians. Um, and Alex is cutting up food. And it was a really great last service day project because each day, you know, they got to do different environmental things. Um, and then they also got to paint the fence and to serve food was a really great way. I think there's another picture. I'm not sure of them serving. Yep, there's Jackson in the kitchen cutting up the food. I love to see those gloves. And I don't know if there's another one. That might be the last. We'll see. Yep, that was the last. Um, the other day that I didn't mention on Wednesday that they served, they work with this rancher. He is donating part of, part of the creek that runs through his land. He still has to move the cows through it, but he's working with them to keep the cows out of the creek. 
And um, that helps with the water and it helps with um, the, the life, the resources and the minerals because it's so thick. I mean, the water is getting sludgy because of all the minerals and everything. So the cows in the water kind of contaminate the water. So um, Diamond and then they had to grab this giant water hose and it's like a fireman's hose and they had to hold it with their legs and spray it to water all these new trees and growth. And uh, those girls are ripped. I mean, they are like really strong. <laughs> um, some of the boys, I'm not gonna say names, some of the boys tried to help the girls and they said it was too hard. So Olivia and Diamond are ripped. They are very strong women. Um, and they got to water some of the trees. We went along the top and kind of cut back some of the things from the trees to help the trees grow. And throughout the week, they learned how to serve God by being good stewards of the land, to see the crisis. And it was really interesting talking to the youth. They were like, I knew there was a water crisis. I just didn't know how it was affecting us. I didn't know how it was affecting you know, what's going on. And they worked for eight hours breaking their back to try and help the earth. And I just thought that was really phenomenal. And then, of course, painting the fence, which was a fun day to paint the fence. And they got to imagine the kids happy in the playground. And the final day of serving the poor, it was a day that brought us all closer together. The big take home I want to just remind you, I think even as adults, we forgot what it was like to be on mission trips, but driving the youth to and from Spokane or driving them to the different work sites, the youth brought up deep, deep spiritual questions about their soul, about death, about life, about fear. They brought up questions about why does such evil have to exist? They brought up some serious questions and we had really good talks in the car. We bonded as a group and I hope that you as adults get to go on adult mission trips again and get to go with youth because I think that you as adults need those times too just as much as the young ones do and bring you closer together and closer together with God and it was just a really great trip and I would like to thank all of you for donating to the car wash and donating to the different programs that led us to be able to go on this trip. You guys mean a lot to the kids and you're making the world a better place and uh, we hope to go on a trip next year. Thanks.